Greetings, Earthlings. It is I, Andre Nightingale, and I have returned from the grave to give my loyal followers yet another equipment video. Well, I'm gonna stop doing that. That was my Chudi accent, by the way. And welcome back to another Azulane video, and today we will be covering the equipment guide for Heavy Cruisers. Oh, look, Gamer Lolly just constructed Minneapolis. Really cool. Well, unlike the other equipment videos, I will be briefly mentioning the prototype guns, as they are the best in their respective category and definitely deserve to be highlighted. Now, quickly, one of you guys in the comments wanted to know where I was farming now that the event is over. Currently, I'm doing stage 12 4 to level up some of my World 13 ships, grind for some PR XP, and to obviously get the final sister of the Takaos, Tokai. Now with all that being said, there's a bunch of exceptions on this heavy cruisers list, so let's jump straight into it. Now a heavy cruisers' main gun, let's go and pick Baltimore for example. A heavy cruisers' main gun shoots slower but much more damaging shots when compared to a light cruisers' main guns. Now the best in slot is almost always the AP Twin 230mm main gun SKC, also known as the Eugen gun, right here. Excluding like heavy cruisers that rely on an HE gun due to their skill, namely Otago and St. Louis PR, they will be covered later on in the exceptions category. Now as you can see this is the prototype version and this is basically a direct upgrade to the twin 203mm, which is a very 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 slight fire rate decrease as you can see. Same exact damage, same exact firepower, just a very small fire rate difference. Now. This is the best overall gun for a heavy cruiser because the AP damage modifiers for heavy cruisers is 75 against light armor, 110 against medium, and 75 against heavy, meaning that this gun will always hit reasonably hard against all targets. Now it's got high damage, fast projectile speed, and an extremely good accuracy, so it's basically good in almost all ex aspects except for a slightly slow reload. It will not be bad in any kind of scenario, and the purple one is solid as well to use as a substitute until you get the gold. Now you can find the twin 203mm in iron blood, purple, and gold boxes, as well as 7.3 and 8.4. Now we can load in real quick. Here's 8.4 right here, the old battlefield. Nice. We can get both the gold and the purple. The purple is just a basically downgraded version of the gold but you can definitely use it as you are farming for the gold one. Now also it is 7-3 right here. Nice, one two. And sure, why not? Let's go and do a gold box too. Now as I'm doing this gold box pull, it is also a nice quick mention to the two prototype guns that are good in their respective categories as well. I'll go back to them once I finish this. And wow! Just like always, I cannot pull the gun that I want to showcase. Well, anyway, back to the guide. <laughs> Baltimore, over here, has the upgraded version, as I said, of the AP gun, the Eugen gun. This is just the direct upgrade, as I just stated earlier. And then over here, St. Louis PR has the upgraded HE version. Now, this is much better than the purple version, which is the regular version. So definitely get this one for the best HE gun for your heavy cruiser main gun. I will be covering those guns later on in this video, I'm just going to cover them in the exceptions category, which will be towards the end. So moving on to the secondary slash auxiliary guns. This, for a heavy cruiser, it can either be a torpedo, but it is almost always a destroyer gun as you can see right here. Now, the Jap if you're a Japanese heavy cruiser, then you will probably have a torpedo, but they are also going to be in the exceptions list on the bottom. Now, as you can see by now, the exceptions list is kind of long in this video, so I'm going to keep hustling. Now, heavy cruisers with the destroyer guns all have an abysmal damage multiplier, as you can see. This one's only 75% efficiency, and Portland's even worse with only 65 efficiency. This means that they're not really going to be adding much more DPS, but instead, these guns are kind of used for support, too. What do I mean by support? Well, obviously, I mean the shield-breaking capabilities. Now, the best slot for this kind of role is the event gun, the Russian one over here, the 130mm main gun, B2LM, 
And also the baguette gun, which you can get during the wrench event, I think. Which are both amazing guns and are definitely the top in this category. Now, just as one little note, they're definitely the best option, but I would definitely focus on putting them on a firepower focused destroyer instead, as they have a very limited rarity and amount. So just in case you do have one or two of them, definitely put it on someone like Nimi or Laffy, for example. They're going to be much better with it, because that would definitely boost their damage output a lot more than being a secondary on a heavy cruiser. Now for more accessible versions and options for the secondary slot, we have the twin 127mm Mark 12, which is the overall better one. And then the other one is the twin 100m Type 98. Now you can find these both in some boxes. The twin 127mm would be found in Eagle Union boxes, as well as stage 5-1, 8-1, 10-3, and 11-1. So let me just go showcase that real quick. 5-1, right here. Then we go over to 8-1. 10-3. Whoops. 10-3, as well as 11-1. Now this is obviously a very good gun to farm because this can also be used as a destroyer main gun. So I would, technically, I would definitely recommend getting a couple of these because they can be used both for a heavy uh, cruiser's secondary as well as a destroyer's main gun. Now the other one on this list would be the twin 100 meter 100mm AA gun. This one is more focused definitely on the shield breaking aspect with its much faster fire rate, but it does a lot less overall damage. So this can be found in the Japanese boxes, 9-4 and 12-4. Let me go over there and showcase that real quick too. So as you can see the 127mm is definitely a lot more accessible than the Japanese 100mm. So 9-4 would be right here. And 11.4 would be over here. Oh wait, shoot, not 11.4, it was uh, 12.4, sorry. Yep, right there. And of course, let's go and do some gacha pulls, because why not? Let's go and look for that 100mm, like I said. Wow, and once again, I have not pulled the gun that I wanted for the third 10 pull in a row. Very cool. So moving on in the next category of the Heavy Cruiser's Equipment Guide is the Anti-Air Slot. Now as always, once almost all AA guns roughly perform equal to each other, so just put any of these gold ones on and they will have very similar DPS with each other. Now generally speaking I would still recommend the Golden Roomba, this one right here, the circular one. Just because it's got very nice damage, and is overall just always a good pick. You can find those again in the Royal Navy boxes, as well as stage 7-2 over here. And stage 11-4. So 11-4 would be right here, with Sendai. And then 7-2 would be back here. Now 7-2 is an amazing stage to farm, because it is also the best map for gold, as one of you guys print, uh, pointed out in the last video because it has four nodes that all have the chance to drop gold. So definitely make sure that you're farming 7-2. And you know what? Let's do our fourth 10 pull. Royal Navy boxes this time. Let's get ourselves a golden Roomba, shall we? Wow! We did not get a golden Roomba! I guess my recording video luck is just really bad. I should probably just go and open them outside of the <laughs> video record. Well, anyway... <laughs> Thing. My morale is kind of dropping a little bit. Well, we've got aux gears now. So for the auxiliary gears for a heavy cruiser, since they have plenty of damage and health already, their gears emphasize increased survivability since their evasion is the only lackluster stat. So then the gears that obviously boost evasion are going to be the highest on this list. So definitely in first place would go to the high performance Hydraulic steering gear. Wow, that is a mouthful. You can get this from the prototype building, another PR research thing. 
It is the best evasion skill uh, stat by far because you get 40 extra evasion, which is drastically amount. Like it's a drastic increase. You get some extra HP, and the skill is very useful because you can evade every single skill. I mean, attack for two seconds. Now, in close second place is the Beaver Squad tag, because you can find this one by doing the collection thing when fully limit breaking a bunch of Fletcher DDs. Now, in comparison to the high performance hydraulic thing, it has a little bit less evasion and a little more HP, and it increases the whole fleet squad by whole fleet speed by 20%. So it's the same tier as the steering gear, both of them are very very good auxiliaries for a heavy cruiser because it increases their evasion by so much. Now, as honorable mentions, you can also use torpedo bulges, as I do have on Portland right now, because torpedoes starting in chapter 12 and 13, it's definitely noticeable that your heavy cruisers will take a lot of damage from torpedoes. So this is very good for tanking torpedoes as you decrease it by 30% of the damage for it. Now obviously, you can always have a repair toolkit on any of your ships, it's just extra HP, it's always good, and basically if you don't have any of the stuff above, it's always good to have a repair toolkit to fill out that extra auxiliary slot. Now moving on to the final exceptions category, there is a big list as I've stated. <laughs> now some heavy cruisers prefer an HE main gun instead of an AP main gun, namely Prototype St. Louis over here, who needs this gun, this exact gun, in order to maximize her, her damage. So she needs this triple 203mm anti-air gun because it is a massive upgrade than the purple one that is normally found in regular boxes. This is because her skill increases HE damage by a massive 35% which is a huge buff, so you need a gun with the highest DPS that shoots HE, high explosive right here, to maximize your damage. Now, you might be worrying, oh my gosh, this is a prototype gear. But, since she is a prototype ship, by the time you finish farming for her, you will definitely have at least one of these lying around, so just make sure you put it on her, and you will be good. Now, the other person that uses HE main gun instead of a AP main gun is Atago down here, right here. Now she doesn't really need this exact prototype gun, you can definitely just use this, oh I don't actually have it, but there is a purple version of the 203mm that is also very good on her. Obviously this one is better than the purple one, but if you don't have it that's also, that's also okay, because her skill, Arsonist right here, Increases damage by 15%, which is not nearly as much as St. Louis PR, but it is also fairly decent and you would definitely benefit by using an HE gun over an AP gun. Now she also has average torpedoes and that will be serving as a segue towards the next topic, which are the heavy cruisers with torpedoes instead of, an ant instead of a destroyer auxiliary secondary gun. That is a mouthful to say. Now, the most notable example for this category would be Ibuki, who is basically a destroyer in a heavy cruiser's body. She has absolutely insane torpedoes that rival Ayanami for torpedo damage. Her torpedo efficiency is a massive 185%, which means that she basically does two times the damage, but that is also balanced out by her basically half of the torpedo stat as a top tier destroyer. As you can see, 287 torpedo over here. Now that would be compared to Ayanami, who would have around whoops, 598, so basically half. Whoops. Now going back to Ibuki, she has two extra preloaded torpedoes as well, so you would definitely benefit by using the best torpedo that you have for Ibuki. This would obviously be, if you have it, the event Rainbow Magnet Torpedo. But if you do not have it, you can always use the quadruple 610mm torpedo for manual play and the quintuple 533mm torpedo for autoplay. I would not recommend using this magnet torpedo right here, the gold one, because it has a much slower fire rate and you would definitely want as many torpedo shots as possible 
to maximize your chance of proccing Flash of Lightning, which is whenever she fires her torpedoes. So guess what? Faster torpedoes means more chance to proc it. Now next up in this torpedo heavy cruiser category is Takao over here. She is notable compared to her sister Atago because she has the special double torpedo skill which gives her an extra chance to shoot another wave of torpedoes. So same thing as Ipuki, just use the 610mm for manual play or the quintuple 533mm for auto and you will be totally fine. So right here quadruple 610 for manual and for auto 533mm. Now the last notable example for this category is Mogami Retrofit. She doesn't really follow the same thing as the others because she needs this quintuple magnet torpedo, either the rainbow or the gold one, and it basically is needed for her because of her third retrofit skill called Suppression Fire. Now this is a very interesting skill that procs whenever this ship lands 5 hits with her torpedoes, so you will need at least 5 torpedo shots per wave to go and maximize your chance of triggering it. Now you would want the magnet one because this would maximize your chance of hitting a target because you will need to hit all 5 torpedoes in order to proc the suppression fire skill. This way your chance of proccing this is the best with the magnet torpedoes that are quintuple. Now with that, this will basically wrap up all of the heavy cruiser equipment guide. As always, like and subscribe if you found this information helpful. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered. I'll try my best to reply. Now the next equipment guide will be on the light cruisers, featuring everyone's favorite, number one. You guys better be hyped up. Now until then, I'll see you guys next time, and I'll see you later. Have a very nice day. Peace guys.